What's up, everybody? It's Make It Make Sense, and the Bravo streets are on fire. You know we had to talk about this. Like the video as the intro plays. Yeah. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. I want to make it make one. Big moves. Surfer. Make it make sense. Tell me how you squeeze it. Just make it make sense. Tell me about the things that you say. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things in your dream. Let me work out all the things in between. Make it make sense. Tell me how you squeeze it. Just make it make sense. Tell me about the things that you say. Make it make sense. Tell me about the things in your dream. Let me work out all the things in between. Make it make sense. I remember Candy how you look like this. I fly above, I, I, I fly above, I, I fly, no, that want you, no, I fly above. I... <laughs> hey guys, and happy birthday, Summer Joy. Um, I did see your comment. I wish you a very happy birthday. Uh, we the straight shooters are glad you are choosing to spend it with us. But let's get into this. So I saw this and I was like, no, y'all know I love Candace. I really do like Candace. Um, there's times where, you know, she could be a little bit hard to deal with when she gets super mad. But other than that, Candace is one of my favorite housewives across any franchise. So it says, y'all sad? Candace Dillard Bassett announces she's leaving Real Housewives of Potomac. So, you know, people in the comments, we wanted Ashley to exit, not Candace. Uh, Brian says, man, the GEBs really ruined the show. Walk out on your own terms, Candace. So do I think that Candace was fired? Technically, no. I think Candace was probably either tired of the show and has she'll be welcome back or they put her on a pause we knew that there was going to be a shakeup in potomac candace was the wild card i never expected to see this headline robin could have left years ago now robin and juan gonna be sitting at home both of them jobless but let's 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 stick to candace right now <laughs> um she gave an exclusive to people magazine at if you have noticed Candace has been doing the rounds recently. She's been on a lot of podcasts. Candace is doing radio. Um, she's been doing what you do when you're exiting the show. It says Candace Dillard Bastard is saying goodbye to the Housewives of Potomac. The singer who joined the series in season three tells people exclusively that she won't be returning to the reality series for its upcoming ninth season. As I embark on a new chapter after six remarkable years with the Real Housewives of Potomac, I am filled with gratitude for the enriching friendships, personal growth, and moments of introspection that have defined this journey. Y'all know she's an orator. <laughs> with the whirlwind of new opportunities and responsibilities on my plate, I've decided to take a break from RHOP. She goes on to tease that her exit might only be temporary, noting this is not a farewell, but a see you later. And unlike in Robin's case, I believe her. The thing about Candace is going to be how well the show is received without her. If she's put on pause or has taken this year off and the show does extremely well, then maybe they won't bring her back. But if she is missed, like I think she will be, we'll see Candace again. And if possible, she should probably do like a season of Traders so that she's still in the Bravo sphere, even if she's not filming completely, and come back as a potential friend of, for a couple episodes of Wendy and Karen. I could see that. <laughs> Jersey Girl said, what personal growth that she doesn't want light-skinned baby? <laughs> <laughs> um, will the current cast be able to carry the show? Probably. Y'all, I'm tired. I'm I'm tired of Giselle. I'm tired. This without Candace, Giselle has a pathway to ice Wendy out of the show. 
we know Karen rides the fence. So it could definitely be a situation of Wendy getting iced out. Um, <laughs> let's continue. The drive back song just ends her note with the message of thanks to her fans. Your unwavering support has been my guiding light, and I look forward to the exciting adventures that lie ahead. And more importantly, sharing them all with you. I will miss Candace on the show. Bassett's departure comes after a fractured season of Real Housewives of Potomac that saw her at odds with the OG cast members and former friends Giselle Bryant and Robin Dixon. It remains unclear whether any were able to mend fences at the reunion. They weren't. I went ahead and I watched this last episode. Uh, Aquarius, Candace wasn't fired, sir. I just said Candace and Robin fire question mark. Because technically, we never know. Bravo does allow people to put out their own press release. And Bravo typically goes with it as long as you're in good standing with Bravo. So we don't technically know. Do I think she could have been put on pause? Yes. Is it a possibility she was fired? Yes. Um, is it a possibility that she left on her own volition? Yes. But we technically never really know. The only person who we know who was actually just plain on fired was Jen Shaw. They even let Kelly Dodd come out with whatever she said about not returning. Um, Sean says, I don't think she was fired. Again, it's a possibility, but I would hope that this is just a pause for Candace. Now, on to Candace and Giselle. I watched this episode, and on the season finale of Potomac, you literally had Cal and Giselle walking in with the mindset that we are going to find fault in what happened with these two women. That physical fight happened. Let me tell you what I'm thinking, y'all. We went play by play when that fight happened. Uh, Candace is about to be doing movies. Candace is on it. She has her sold out tours at the, through the city winery she's acting she actually owns her house I, i'm here for whatever candace does and i'm definitely going to support it but okay back to this fight y'all <clears throat> and y'all can tell me if you see it this way or if you see it a different way when sesame street went up to candace did you guys see how the narrative changed it went from Candace and Wendy were talking about her and she chose to approach them. Ashley had that narrative. Cal and Giselle had that narrative as well. At the end of the day, you have a situation with a woman who has alleged that another woman's husband was flirting with her. And this was done on national TV. Ashley knew what she was doing each time she put this woman in Candace's space. We've now seen two times where Candace is disengaged. Everybody says that Candace gets her reactions are too visceral, but twice she gave Sesame Street nothing. This cast of bitter, disgruntled co-workers will always find fault in what this girl does, whether she is spewing out hate and negativity or whether she is actually just minding her own damn business. That's what they wanted from her. You wanted a reaction from her so you could say, wow, Candace picked up a bottle. You have a situation where Sesame Street went into Candace's personal space, cameras were down, and decided for a second time she was going to try to confront this woman. But the hate for Candace is so real that people don't even want to acknowledge this. This is partly why I had to stop reviewing the show because I was getting so frustrated. How do you not see this? So if you have Ashley, Nika, um, Kiana, and Wendy all saying this is not the time, don't do this, and she is still trying to approach this woman, you call me Sesame Street, you did this, and then you throw a drink. And then they're like, well, you should have let, Kiana should have stayed out of it. What? Because if you guys remember correctly, when Monique 
got into a fight with Candace. Giselle pushed her. The exact same thing that Kiana did when Monique was the aggressor of a physical fight. Giselle was next to her, and you see Giselle extend her arm and push her away from the table. But they don't want to talk about that. Somebody let Gabor know I'm saying this. <laughs> when, let me take this, make this smaller. When Giselle pushed Monique, that actually got that fight jumping. Kiana is standing there saying, don't do this right now. This girl throws a drink. Kiana pushes the girl and the girl hits Kiana in the face with a glass and Kiana commences to molly in her ass. That's what happened. And they are still trying to find fault in Kiana. Well, if you're finding fault in Kiana, you need to find fault in Giselle for getting that fight started. And even Sesame Street says, well, she put her hands on me. I might push you if you're coming up to try to fight a friend of mine or you're throwing a drink. You might, you, I might extend my hand and pop you. And you never know where Black Eye will come from, i.e. when Drea and Sunday Carter on Basketball Wives fought and uh, Malaysia punched her in the eye. So she was walking around with a black eye. You never really know. Run up, get done up. You never know who's going to throw the blow. But you weren't ready to get beat. Ashley had to put her tail between her legs and apologize for that because she knew it was bull. In front of Giselle and them, it was very easy to say it was Candace and them. But when she got around Candace and them and Candace's sister, all of a sudden that tone changed. You know, yeah, and you know, I'm sorry. You should have been sorry last year when you did this. You brought Sesame Street looking ass twice to a space where you knew Candace was going to be to try to antagonize Candace. And when you did not get the reaction that you wanted from Candace, now all of a sudden is you picked up a bottle. Let me just say this for people who have never been in a fight. How I react to you putting your hands on me doesn't matter. In my opinion, run up, get done up. And in the situation where I may not be able to get to you, bottles, things can get picked up. Now, nobody wanted Sharice to get a, a boot but if you're telling kiana to stay out of it then you should have as well if that's the case then everybody needs to stay out of it but what do you do when candace says that the goddamn um finish line keeps moving y'all don't want well candace was over there and candace this is exactly what cal said now i'm gonna need cal to really work on giselle's hair because he hasn't gotten it right in, in eight seasons. But you stay focused on talking about other people. Cal and them said, it's that mouth. It's that mouth. So it was, it was Candace. It was her mouth. That's what started it. It was the mouth. But in the same breath, you say, well, if Kiana's fighting, where was Candace? What? So Candace needs candace is now starting it and now candace has abandoned her friend that's the narrative that they wanted out there do you want her in it or not kiana for her part was doing what a friend should do no this isn't the time and got caught up in the whirlwind <sighs> i'm so tired of giselle and I'm so tired of the hair that Cal puts on Giselle's head. And I was tired of Robin being all up in Giselle's bush, like they alleged, but she's gone. So I'm, I'm, I have nothing. Bye-bye. <laughs> they wanted to put this off on Candace so bad. That's what the, uh, they wanted to give it to Candace and it backfired. So to Candace, I say, I've enjoyed watching you on the show. I definitely have seen your growth and I know that you have grown from this show. 
because when somebody alleged that your husband was cheating with her, Candace had no response. Candace had absolutely no response. And remind me, members, I, I still know that we need to do our members only live. Ask me for some behind the stuff on Candace, and I'll give that to you in that members only live. Remind me. Um. <clears throat> so anyway, let's get to Robin. Um. Where is she? It said, "Oop." Robin Dixon reportedly axed from Real Housewives of Potomac. Just a few hours ago, Candace announced her official departure from Housewives. Well, now more cash shakeups are slowly being revealed. Um, the outlet claims the producers of the show are attempting to move in a different direction and revive the show after a less than favorable season. It was not fun to watch people not talk to other people. Why would I want to watch a show where people just sit around not speaking to each other? They feel like Wendy and Candace were wrong. When Candace said, I sat through this whole Sears fashion show, I low-key fell out my bed. <laughs> That's what it felt like. It felt like the Kardashian collection from Sears. Is Sears still around? I don't think that collection could go to Sears. I think that it could be a Timu collection. It could be a Shein collection. And not one of the top end Shein collections. It could be one of those collections where you just, you know, all garments are between three to six dollars. That's what I got. Uh, be blessed. Uh, 1,000 in the chat, not even 500 likes. Hit that like, ma'am. Thank you so much, be, be blessed, for that announcement <laughs> and uh, for the super sticker. Carol Chamberlain says, say that again, Mims. Candace was not wrong. Love your commentary. I wish somebody would tell me how to respond to somebody throwing a drink on me or somebody hitting me. Now, if somebody picks up, here, here's the double standard. If somebody picks up a glass first, then I think you're the aggressor. I do. But we didn't have this visceral reaction for Mariah when she actually broke a glass before Heavenly did anything. Heavenly and her were going at it. Mariah broke a glass on a chair. That is not right. But if somebody throws a drink on you and I can't get at you, you might catch a bottle. And I and typically the person's gonna be aiming for your face. That's just not the way reality works. Um <clears throat> Robin. Robin, Robin, Robin. Giselle saved you year after year after year. You had one job and you let your disdain, you let being all up in Giselle's bush, you let swallowing up on Juan. Have you ever been swallowed up, swallowed up? Distract you from the fact that this is your real job. All this money you're putting into these other like this is your job you were not fun to watch you followed in suit with Giselle and look at where it got you it got you one more season through this stuff with Juan but it wasn't like okay I'm gonna have a renaissance I'm gonna come back I'm gonna give y'all what you want you literally got lazy and the people said I feel about her I'm numb <laughs> I wonder if she's going to be able to file for unemployment. Report this morning uh, on the radio. Who was this wonderful person that was given a fashion show with no fashions? How dreadful. <laughs> that was Giselle and Ashley. So we sat through a fashion show with no fashions. We sat and watched Giselle not want to even acknowledge Wendy's presence. And another thing, while I'm on it, because I haven't been reviewing this show, how the hell are you going to tell me? You're going to point at me and say, I don't like her. If you don't like me and you, first off, don't point at me, you better watch your fingers and you better watch them B words. <laughs> what did Nene say? You better watch them bitches. Um, if you're going to point at me and say you don't like me, I'm not going to just embrace you in your moment of need. If you don't F with me and I don't F with you, the most you could get is I'm sorry for your loss. 
But you guys want Wendy to be up her ass. Now, don't get me wrong. Wendy kind of got on my nerves this season. But the lesser of two evils is Wendy. If this is what we have been saying, shaking up this cast and getting rid of Giselle's muscle is going to force Giselle to actually go to work. Ashley is over here alleging that she is still massaging them liver warts on Michael's feet. To keep herself on the show. I hope you guys see that. Ashley did not want to be the next Robin. So now she's saying she's still having some type of physical relationship with Michael. That's the say on the show. Because without Sesame Street, without her beef with Candace, what can Ashley bring? So my suggestion, Ashley, is get rid of your allegiance to Giselle and just have an open cast. I don't know how this will work. I'm hoping they're going to get somebody who actually has money to come on the show. Um, Robin, you gone. And I don't think you're going to be missed. <laughs> um, cue the content guy said, oh, Rob, dang. Also, y'all, Wanda, the AKA David Alley from In Living Color, Deborah was her. Ooh, she not pretty at all. Oh. No, nah, no, nah, Mariah was right. Big Buddy had it coming. The point is, when you pick up a weapon first, is what I was saying. If you pick up a wedding weapon in defense, that's one thing. To break a glass is is a bit much. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for the con for the um super chat. And Dario the realtor says Robin got fired like Marlo got fired. Bye. And now Marlo, okay, y'all might be a little mad at me about this, but now Marlo is reviewing one of carlos king shows with him why aren't you working is marlo gonna be a blogger too okay and you got mariah and buffy now reviewing the show over um their review of married to medicine on <laughs> what is happening i need to check out that carlos king interview with um with dr simone because i would have never thought he would have took that interview or she would have taken that interview I didn't think they liked each other. Um, but Carlos was uh, smart for doing that interview. <laughs> okay. In the comments, I do know that Robin has some fans. Y'all let me know if Rob, if y'all feel like Robin's going to be missed. Y'all let me know. Oh, uh, Mims, they got you. You don't sound the same. Energy is not the same. <laughs> uh, I haven't had a drink. <laughs> it's too early. It's too early. Um, nope. Okay. Robin will not be missed. Let's get into let's get into Mia. When I watched the show last night and Mia was very upfront with G, I was like, this is reality television. And although it was horrible to see a family breaking up, this is actually what it should be about. What I like about Mia is also what I didn't like about Mia. And that is, I did not like that she put the paternity of her son in question on national TV. But I believe that was a real authentic moment. So I like to see real authentic moments. G was this type of older person who is not necessarily happy in what he has, but I don't think that G feels like he could get another Mia. So he's upset and he's trying to hold on. The problem, G, is do I think Mia was technically cheating on you? Yes. But I don't really care because you've been cheating on your wife. You were having, you were having, you and Mia was doing it on that beach, probably Hallover Beach in Miami, the nude beach. And you were married. I don't feel bad for you. I don't feel bad at all. You got what you got. And Mia over here, I don't feel bad for you in the sense talking about, well, G was tricking off money at the club. Yeah, he was tricking off money at the club the same way he was tricking off money in the champagne room when he was paying you for your time at $10,000 an hour. What am I missing? Y'all, I don't feel bad for these people. 
it's sad because of the kids being brought into it and paternity being questioned. That is the most stupid shit I have heard in a long time. It does not take uh, two days to go and get a paternity test. Y'all could have went to Maury. Y'all like the attention. Y'all like the spotlight. What the hell do you mean you weren't able to get a paternity test? And that little boy is what, six, seven, eight? And the conversation on camera reminded me we're talking about g and mia at the end of this episode talking about the fact that at no point did they really feel like they had a real relationship 10 years in he always knew that she was cheating you're going to tmz you're going to the blogs you are like simon g you are literally like simon do i feel bad for him that he had prostate cancer and he can now no longer do it of course but you're over here telling this woman to stay miserable with me. You know she's going to keep seeing the radio personality. But you're talking about staying for the kids. Get the hell out of here. Mia, go live your best life. Go do whatever you do on them beaches. You are in your renaissance. You're sitting next to Andy. You're giving us actual reality TV on reality TV. I just wish they would have left the kid stuff out. Questioning the kids' paternity when you know this will be seen is some nasty work. I didn't like that. But I am happy that these mofos are giving us reality effing television. I never thought I would say this, but Mia is actually coming to the forefront of this show. Mark my words. Mia is over there watching everybody's video right now. And Robin is on the stoop crying in her Monica heels. That's what it is. <laughs> Robin is somewhere crying in her Monica heels. Candace is like, it is what it is. Let me go ahead and go to my next gig. I'm, 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 I'm excited for Candace that if this is just a pause, she can come back and really show us what she's about. I'm excited for her. And I'm happy that Robin is no longer in Giselle's bush. Now, how long will Robin and Juan be able to sit on that couch jobless? I'm. This may sound mean. Some of y'all might be mad at me. But when Robin's check stops coming in, the question is going to be how long is he going to stay with her? How long is he going to stay with this woman? It's never a good idea to stick around in a relationship that you don't want to be in just, as, just for the sake of the kids. Because kids pick up when people are miserable. You want kids in a happy, healthy environment where everybody is happy. If parents are depressed, that shit trickles down. Kids know that. Juan is leaving as soon as the money runs out. Juan gives soccer mom vibes. They're driving around in nice cars. They just bought a house. I always talk about reality show money. It's not guaranteed. So, you know, the one good thing about Giselle is we know she don't spend any money on her hair or really on her house or her clothes. There's no frills. So I know Giselle's money is is put aside. And we do see Giselle in the new G-Wagon, but anybody can tell you, you can write half of that off as a business expense. So you'll see a lot of these people in G-Wagons because technically it's over 6,000 pounds and you can write that off. FYI. So, you know, she's not... <sighs> I went to Robin's page and she is telling you guys to tune in to her and Giselle's podcast. I won't be doing that. I'm not going to be doing that, y'all. But if somebody does, let me know what they're talking about. I don't care. You're gone, Robin. Um, let's get into this, y'all. So behind the scenes, I told you guys that Mona had put out that press release. In my opinion, Mona put out the press release about SWV and Escape coming back to kind of push the girls into signing their, their documents to get the show on. I knew that the show was not actually, 
the portrayal in at the Jasmine brand was not accurate. And it's not because of Jasmine. It was because of the person who leaked it to Jasmine. I think that that was Mona's way of getting the girls to see that there was interest in the show. Mona is extremely smart, but it wasn't until I believe this weekend that that show actually came to fruition. But your girl is not going to be a part of it. Latasha Scott is still not going to be a part of it. And I know a lot of you people don't, I know a lot of people do not like her, but that rift really catapulted the show. But I can tell you that nobody's interested in filming with Rocky. This ain't stealing. And Rocky comes with Latasha. So interestingly enough, I went to Latasha's page and she has wiped everything off her page except this one good photo. And I don't blame her because Balmain is expensive. So she looks good in here. Um, you know, she got the new body, the new skin color, well, at least the new skin color on her face. Her hands are her original color, but her face, you know, is, is different, but she looks good. But all of the stuff on her actual page that talked about her album is gone. What the hell is that about? What is this about, y'all? Now, initially, when we saw the downfall of Rocky... This ain't stealing. She wiped him clean, and he wiped his page clean of her. But you still saw all of her gospel stuff. Y'all think she's going to be filing for unemployment? Like Robin. I'm going to say this about SWV and Escape. A, everybody who hates Candy is about to be mad again because she's really not leaving Bravo. <laughs> B, <laughs> uh, with this show specifically, it's going to follow the lives of the girls who are actually in the group. Now, we don't know anything else that's going on about Latasha's career as a gospel artist. But we do know that she probably needs that check. Most important thing in a relationship is communication. Escape, are you ready to communicate? And what about you? SWV? No, nothing. Okay, I think we've made some good. Um, I'm excited. Replay gang, y'all tell me, are y'all excited? I'm actually excited to see the show come back. And I'm excited to see how they navigate not having the family drama. So now I think the drama is probably going to be between these two groups, hashing it out. But I'm excited to see. And I also want to see some more behind the scenes with Tamika Scott. Because I've been a big proponent for Tamika actually getting on Housewives of Atlanta. That lady has a lot of celebrity friends. She has the money. Why wouldn't she go to Ari Choi? I would actually want to, and y'all, I would actually want to see Tamika Scott and to shake things up at Tamar to Ari Choi. Give us some like real celebrities. <laughs> Somebody said, Dina said the group drama isn't interesting. What if they can open communication for Latasha to come back? Nobody wants to film with Rocky. And Rocky is a part of Latasha no matter what. So I don't think it's an option. And that's, I guess, a little bit behind the scenes information. Nobody, you know, nobody wants to film with him. Uh, Tamar, hell no, no. Tamar needs, Tamar needs to be on yesterday. Candace quit. Robin was fired. Yeah, you have to go back to the beginning of the video where we kind of addressed it. Uh, Mims, we know you're a Tamika fan, <laughs> but no, stop. Hey, that's my opinion. Y'all don't have to. I mean, y'all don't have to like Tamika, nor do you have to like Tamar. Oh, Tamar. A lot of people don't. I love Tamar. Cal is annoying. That's true. You must be at the beginning. Um. Annette, Ashley should be next. Jizzy got to talk to castmates now. Absolutely. And I absolutely agree. Ashley and her forehead need to go. Um, Summer Joy, thanks for the super chat. And happy birthday again. 
talk about it says that six foot Hispanic male came to work this season. Good job, me. <laughs> Y'all, why did Karen have security? The hell was that? B Bless said we have two thousand here, not even a thousand likes. Get that like. Thank you guys. Definitely hit that like button and thanks, B Bless. Neither are the material. Okay. Yes, get rid of Ashley. Okay, y'all, we got to talk about this real quick. What the hell is going on with Simon and Portia? I'm starting to believe. Oh, wait, did we finish it? Good progress here. Have we? I think we can all agree we're ready for the next step. Uh oh. What's the next step? Well, I'm glad you asked. The show is greenlit. Um, where is this story? Okay, here we go. It says Simon Gabadia claims Portia brought a gunman to their home on multiple occasions, says he had to call the police for peace. Neighbors, the tea is hot. As y'all know, Portia Williams and her estranged husband, Simon Gabadia, are divorcing after just five months of marriage. Portia originally filed first, but now Simon is coming with a filing of his own, making some bold accusations towards Portia. Y'all know we can fact check this. According to the documents obtained by page six, Simon is claiming that Portia brought an, un an armed gunman to their home child. He says she abandoned their house at one point only to return with the man visibly bearing a gun for reasons unknown to Gubadia. He then says he had to call the police to maintain the peace. Then a few days later, on March 24th, Portia, her mother, and her mother's boyfriend allegedly popped back up at their house to disengage security cameras and tamper with items and evidence. What the hell is this, y'all? Since the filing of the instant divorce, wife's actions have been erratic, unstable, threatening, and harassing to the house staff and the minor children. Well, you knew that when you saw this loose cannon of a woman try to fight Dennis's mama. You were sitting there holding her. You knew what it was when you signed the paperwork. You knew. She then fought Kenya. She then fought Jamie. She then fought, well, actually, Cynthia kicked her in the baby door. Shout out to Jolene. Kicked her right in the coochie. And if y'all remember correctly, after she got kicked in the coochie, she said she couldn't work for two weeks. What kind of work would being kicked in the coochie prevent you from doing? <laughs> she said it, not me. She said I couldn't work for two weeks. So what are you surprised by, Simon? This is what you signed up for. You knew what it was. Um, Wife's actions have been erratic, unstable, threatening, and harassing to the house staff and the minor children, the documents state. Do his children live with him? Williams' behavior has caused safety concerns, especially since they are minor children, Gabadi's children, currently living in the marital residence. Now, that is new. Also in his filing, Simon claims Portia took calculated steps to marry and divorce him shortly thereafter to intentionally trigger parts of their prenup for personal financial gain and greed. You thought she married you for love? If you can go back to my reviews, I told you. Right, Leah. Shout out to Jolene Lundson. I told you guys, Instagram relationships don't last. I told you guys at the very beginning of reviewing, actually reading Portia's book. When I was reading Portia's book, I told you guys, they have too much of an Instagram relationship. It's not going to work out. And what do you know? Um... I, I can't. Y'all remember Portia's coloring book? And don't get me wrong. I don't mind Portia. But Simon, you knew you were marrying a city girl. She, I would sometimes when you are like reviewing things that Portia's involved in, it's like, it's like you're reading Humpty Dumpty. It's like, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I feel like Portia had probably left her house to her mama because she knew she was going to be back there at some point. There's so many things about Portia. I, you know, the jokes write themselves. Maybe we'll do another one of her book readings. Uh, maybe we'll do another one of her book readings. 
I don't know. We'll see. Also in his filing, Simon claims Forster to calculate his steps to marry and divorce him shortly thereafter to intentionally trigger parts of their prenup for personal financial gain and greed. Simon concluded his filing by asking the judge to grant him a restraining order against Portia. What is going on, y'all? What the hell is going on? Uh, Mims, was that it for you with Portia trying to fight Dennis's mom? Was that it for you with Portia? I actually don't mind Portia. I'm glad she's coming back to Ari Choi. I give Portia a hard time because she, to me, she just kind of falls flat as a character. When I read Portia's book, it was relationship after relationship of Portia trying to come up with these contrived relationships based on what the man can do for her. Somebody gave her some money to go shopping and he, she took his credit card and bought a ring, an engagement ring for herself. You intentionally accepted Cordell's marriage proposal, even though he gave you another woman's ring, even though he had dated you for a hot minute and you never knew you lived across the street from him because they both lived in a nice apartment complex in Atlanta. He never told you y'all were neighbors. Then all of a sudden, his baby mama says, no, you jump at it. Only years later to acknowledge that or allude to you being his beard. Now you get with your castmate's husband because he had money. Portia wasn't looking at Simon thinking, I want his body. That wasn't the case. Portia was looking at that house. Now Portia does not want to be included in anything that he has going on because they owe a million dollars to a private jet, to a private um, jet company. Portia was in it for the money. Portia never wants to acknowledge. Up until the divorce, this is like Nene said, y'all, we were just casually hanging out. Y'all loved each other just a couple days ago. Now you're done. So either you are dumb as a box of rocks or you are purposefully obtuse when it comes to men with money. And Portia has come a long way from not knowing what the Underground Railroad is. There's no reason that Portia needs a man for money at this point. <laughs> Mims, get off her neck. Okay, <laughs> please stop. This wasn't even about Portia. This was about Robin getting fired. But y'all know, y'all know how it happens. I'm sorry, but it was- That's some hot tea. <laughs> I can't help myself. That's some hot tea. I, I'm sorry. Let me get off. Portia. I, I don't mind Portia. I'm happy she's back on the show. <laughs> you can't take anybody's husband. You can't take anybody's husband. But imagine if Miss Deborah, who works at the cubicle two places from you, finds out that you and your husband aren't doing well and you catch her at the Red Lobster with your husband. Y'all going to be fighting. Y'all gonna be fighting. So why is it that Fallon can't be fighting? It don't matter if she knew this woman for two minutes. You knew her husband. You knew where she lived. You then broke bread with her. And now you, you then stole Florida Evans. How do you suck the dick of a coward? I don't know that Simon's a car, but y'all know I like that clip. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Janice Marshall, thank you so much for the super sticker. Elaine Brown, thank you so much for the super sticker. And Measure Man said, Simon have several seats at the back of the bus. Yes, and not on the private jet, because now we know you can't actually afford them. Um, you owe a million dollars to a private jet company. You got sued because you were trying to buy some estate in Miami. That didn't go through. You try like y'all got this seven million dollar house, but we don't even know for how long. Ask Portia if she can spell golden. <laughs> she took the man and the man. <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta tell you, these hoes ain't loyal. You Who's the host, Simon or Portia, or both? <laughs> Tanisha says she's tired of me. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, I got to go. Um, this is very interesting. I 
I technically wouldn't mind seeing Latasha Scott, but I don't think that anybody would sign on if Latasha was going to be on it. So this SWV and Escape is going to be more about what SW, I mean, Escape looks like without Tasha. So anyway, guys, you guys have, let me see. <laughs> Both of them. Okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, Gina says she's glad Candace is gone. Tasha brought the drama. What she didn't bring was a successful gospel album. But I wish her the best. All of them the best. I'll be excited. Uh, you guys know I'll be reviewing SWV and Escape. And I'm going to give RHOA a chance with this new cast shakeup because that's what I asked for. We still have a lot to discuss, y'all. I got to do my members only live, which maybe I can do that tonight at some point. Um, and I still got to finish the Nickelodeon. I got to follow up to see if I can get that interview with one of the people who, you know, was on the actual documentary about Nickelodeon. I'm giving you guys more than uh, sometimes some stuff can get dark. So I'm trying to like mix it up. So I ask that you guys, you know, understand that, you know, covering dark things. I do think that we need to speak truth to power, but I also want to come and have fun with you guys. So it'll be mixed up. We're going to still do court cases and everything, but we're going to have some fun on this channel. So you guys have a good day. Thank you guys for spending your lunchtime with me. And I'm going to see you all tomorrow and maybe tonight for the members, but I'll let the members know. Have a good night. Good day, y'all.